Jack, a bottom-tier small character among the hooligans, has no money, no connections, and no influence. Even in a game of mahjong, he manages to continuously draw the west wind tile. Pushing the table away, he looks indifferent. The landlord violently beats him, warning him not to return. Disregarding the warning, Jack, with blood all over his head, confronts the landlord once again at the mahjong parlor. Lying in the hospital corridor, Jack, feeling life has no meaning, seeks a breakthrough. He turns to an underground intermediary and secures a job involving murder, demanding a high price. The intermediary assigns him a job no one else dares to take. The buyer wants to test him, and Jack reveals a series of scars on his waist. The buyer's bodyguard disapproves, so Jack stabs at him with a knife. The bodyguard catches the blade with one hand, but Jack raises his hand, and his finger falls to the ground. His subordinates rush to find ice to preserve the severed finger. Ultimately, the buyer points a gun at Jack, then hands it over to him, and he passes the test. Next, he buys a used car from a scrapyard and boldly speeds toward his first target, the landlord. Jack doesn't intend to kill him but to reclaim his dignity. The audience mocks him, applauding each time he loses money, eager to see how he will lose all his money. Jack remains silent and unresponsive, doubling, tripling, and even quadrupling the money each time he loses. Continuously losing, he continues to increase the stakes. The landlord and the audience are astonished, they've never seen someone so indifferent to money. Eventually, all the spectators stand on Jack's side, cheering him on, curious to see if he can make a comeback. In the end, Jack wins repeatedly, leaving the landlord in complete defeat, while Jack remains expressionless. The landlord admits defeat and asks his friends nearby if the banquet should start. Today is the day of the newlyweds, everyone watches the landlord, who has no choice but to continue dealing cards. The result is a complete loss for the landlord, and a group of people helps cover his debts. The landlord can't help but sigh, wondering if it's a joke, just a pastime, no need to go all out. Last time, he brandished a knife for a trivial matter, and now, he's risking his life just to win. This is Jack's capital for a comeback, he does everything with all his might. But now that he suddenly has money, will he still go all out? Jack goes back to the intermediary, intending to spend money to hire another assassin for the job. The intermediary quotes exorbitant prices, so Jack personally negotiates and ends up hiring the female assassin Carmen. Jack doubts her abilities, and at that moment, the buyer's bodyguard shows up, swearing to cut off Jack's fingers after he completes the order. But as soon as he sits down, Carmen takes out a dinner knife and stabs it straight in. The bodyguard once again catches the blade, repeating the same mistake. Carmen and Jack make a quick escape. Jack takes her to a small hotel, but Carmen coldly says she won't do it unless it's a luxury hotel. Jack brings her to a top-notch hotel, but the manager refuses, claiming they don't do business with locals. Carmen thinks it's just because they look down on them. Jack takes out a wad of money, but the manager still refuses to give them a room. After a punch from Jack, the manager politely asks them to leave. Feeling a bit embarrassed, they return to the small hotel, one washing their feet, the other counting money. Jack is awakened in the middle of the night, realizing that her shoes and socks are incredibly stinky. Unable to bear it, he washes her socks for her. The next day, Carmen is gone, leaving only her socks. Jack has to search the streets to find her. Just when Jack is about to give up, the phone rings. Carmen instructs him to bring money and meet her at a restaurant within 15 minutes. Jack rushes there, and upon arrival, Carmen calls and tells him to punch the waiter or she will leave. After delivering the punch, Jack runs away, chased by hotel security. With no other options, he heads to the rooftop. Life. On the way back, Carmen demands an additional $20,000 and another gun. Jack only has one gun, and she wants him to rent another. A disheveled man at the bar receives him. The man seems experienced in the underworld but doesn't have a gun. He leads Jack to another location, where a woman receives him. Jack, realizing he has been deceived, tries to leave but collapses. The man and woman were waiting for the effects of the spiked drink to take effect. They unite to take Jack's belongings. In the midst of their struggle, Jack brandishes his gun, scaring them off. He quickly retreats, finds Carmen, and retrieves all the down payment. The two argue in the hallway, and Jack is deeply disappointed in her. Carmen finally reveals her true story. She went to prison for that man, who took the money and cheated on her. Carmen had followed him since she was young, desperate to know her place in his heart. 
Her life was ruined, and she could have been happy. Jack softened and took Carmen back with him. On the tram ride back, Jack finds a tattered notebook in her bag, containing her dreams and a postcard of paradise. They return to the small hotel, where the conditions are deplorable, and moans can be heard constantly. Jack takes her to the upscale hotel again, and the manager initially refuses, stating they don't do business with locals. However, upon seeing the calm Jack and the expectant look in Carmen's eyes, the manager hands them a key card and surprisingly gives them a room. In the beautiful room, with the window open and warm breeze on their faces, even the desire to smoke diminishes. Carmen voluntarily asks for a tub of hot water. Bathes after trimming her nails, as if rejuvenating herself. Lying in bed, they envision their future plans. Jack wants to go to Japan, and Carmen dreams of going to that paradise. She asks Jack to meet that man again and find out if he still remembers her. Jack goes and even brings several bottles of alcohol. Covered in blood, he returns to the hotel, encountering the manager in the elevator, who smiles and helps him to their floor. Jack returns, saying that the man remembers her and is still waiting for her. He wants Carmen to feel better, but Carmen is moved to tears, wanting to give all her money to that man. Jack reveals the truth, the man never mentioned her. Carmen, heartbroken, still insists on giving him all the money, making him remember her and feel guilty for a lifetime. Jack angrily pours all the money into the toilet, and Carmen desperately tries to retrieve it. Jack vents his frustration, thinking Carmen is now with him and has him in her heart. Carmen looks at the man behind her and suddenly realizes that there will be other men in this world who will lose their temper. After expressing his anger, Jack is stunned for a moment, then puts everything back in place. He shouldn't have presumptuously considered the feelings of this foolish woman. Leaving the final payment and a gun, he turns and walks away. In the evening, Carmen goes to the bar herself to find that man. As he sits down, Carmen starts shooting continuously, tears streaming down her face as she concludes everything. However, this is just Carmen's fantasy. The man emerges with bandages, showing Carmen a smile. She laughs not at the man's appearance but at herself. She should have come here earlier. The buyer's bodyguard found Jack again. A group of people held him down, ready to cut off his left hand first and then the right hand tomorrow. However, the reattached severed finger was practically useless. In the chaos, Jack inserted the knife back, and the bodyguard caught it with one hand. Everyone was stunned, and the bodyguard subordinates quickly went to prepare ice packs and towels. He almost pleaded, saying that if they continued, it would be over for him. In the end, Jack voluntarily released the knife, and this grudge was resolved. Surprisingly, the two of them even sat down together and had a drink. Afterward, Jack returned to the mahjong parlor, deliberately seeking out the landlord. The landlord brought a group of henchmen, prepared for another confrontation, but what he received was a simple apology. The landlord seemed a bit bewildered, surprised that there could be such a resolution. Jack returned and found Carmen again, no longer holding on to grudges. Carmen wanted to cut her hair short, and Jack helped her with the haircut. However, as they cut, the tension grew, and Carmen ended up pointing a gun at him, forcing him to cut his hair short as well. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside, it was the countdown to the 1997 Hong Kong handover. They excitedly joined the crowd. Jack watched Carmen laugh among the people and had an idea. They got separated in the crowd but found each other when two trams crossed paths. They shared their joy while eating ice cream. Carmen proposed a game, if a tram comes in a while, Jack goes tomorrow, and if no tram comes, she goes. This joke was her way of fantasizing that she could still live on. She told Jack not to read newspapers, not to watch TV, not to listen to the radio, just fly away immediately without asking anything, then he could pretend she hadn't died. As the night passed, they packed their bags ready to leave. On the tram, Jack suddenly received a call, telling him to change the location. They quickly rushed to the new assassination site. Jack handed over a gun and a target photo to Carmen. She nervously searched for the target, opened the envelope, but found only a cell phone and the postcard of paradise. She suddenly realized that Jack had deceived her, he had gone in her place. After firing the bullets in the gun according to the planned route, Jack sprinted without a break. He ascended the rooftop, leaping from the position they once sat.
Carmen, running frantically, realized that police cars and ambulances had arrived early. Unable to find Jack, she got into a taxi and rushed to the airport. After sitting for a while, she couldn't resist checking newspapers. Finally, on the TV, she heard the information she wanted. The assassin had escaped without a trace. Carmen was overjoyed, covering her mouth, her heart blooming with happiness. She boarded a plane to the paradise she longed for, while Jack watched the plane pass by from a shipping container by the seaside. 